Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School. My name is Mike Thompson. We love that you're here watching these videos, but remember this course is more than this video. You must be following the course online and thirdly review this material with your flight instructor. Today's lesson we're going to talk about stalls. Now stalls are a rapid decrease in lift caused by a separation of airflow from the wings surface brought on by exceeding the critical angle of attack. Boy, that's a mouthful, and sometimes it sounds a little scary. It's not uncommon to have some anxiety around stalls. Let me help you think this through. Stalls in a training airplane are nothing to be worried or scared about. Your flight instructor is very proficient in these maneuvers, and it doesn't hurt the airplane, nobody is going to be hurt. All we're doing here is increasing the angle of attack, angle of, attack of the airfoil and seeing how the airflow responds. Now, what am I talking about? Remember, the angle of attack we discussed earlier is between the cord line which is the leading edge to the trailing edge of the airfoil between the cord line and the relative wind hitting that airfoil. Remember what we said about relative wind. Take the words and flip them. It's the wind relative to the aircraft's movement. So what we're doing is just working with that angle. Now you can see in this diagram a typical training aircraft airfoil stalls around 16 degrees angle of attack. Do you see that right here? The cord line, the relative wind, 16 degrees. The airflow is trying to come over the top of the wing and is not able to smoothly follow the top of the wing. It starts to burble and that pressure differential between the top and the bottom of the wing is lost. And this is what we mean by a rapid decrease in lift from the separation of that airflow. Now, bear a couple of things in mind. First of all, the wing is still producing some lift. It's just not producing enough lift to maintain level flight. Secondly, bear this in mind. As we reduce the angle of attack, that airflow starts to flow once again more and more smoothly over the top of the airfoil, reinstituting the force of lift that we talked about earlier. Another important concern with stalls is that notice we have not talked about speed. It is a misconception to think that my airplane stalls at this specific speed or that specific speed. Uh, I'm sure you're starting to study VSO and VS1, etc. And you're probably memorizing some speeds for those, which is great. But the key here to remember is it's not about speed, it's about angle of attack. Why is that important? Because this aircraft could exceed this critical angle of attack at any speed. It's important that pilots understand that. Now, when we started out, we said, hey, stalls are nothing to be anxious about. And all of a sudden, uh, Mike, now you've made me very anxious because you told me it could stall at any speed. I could just be flying along and bam, stall. No, that's not the case. No need to be anxious. I could cause the aircraft to exceed its critical angle of attack at 
any airspeed. But I'm the pilot, I'm flying the airplane, I'm not going to do that. So remember, it could stall at any speed, but it's only going to stall at one critical angle of attack. Now, the second diagram I want you to study for a little bit is called the uh, angle of attack diagram. Notice vertically we see coefficient of lift and horizontally we see the angle of attack in degrees. The yellow line on the graph is depicting the quantity of lift that's increasing as the angle of attack across the bottom increases. It is true for these airfoils that as I increase the angle of attack, I will increase the coefficient of lift. Now notice when we get to the top where that yellow line starts this curve, that's the stall point. And if you take a look at the top of that yellow curve, we are at approximately 16 degrees angle of attack. And as we continue to increase it, look what happens to that yellow curve. It starts its downward movement. That is where the airflow has separated from the top of the airfoil. It can no longer flow smoothly. There's a dramatic reduction in the quantity of lift. Remember, the wing is still producing some lift, just not enough. And a pilot would say that airflow is stalled. The airfoil is stalling because that airflow is stalled and burbling. It does not mean that the engine stalled. Frequently, um, a lot of pilots have previously driven cars or trucks or worked with engines. And if you have, you're probably common or you're probably uh, familiar with the common occurrence of, uh, you know, the engine stalled. It didn't start. Um, it didn't work, work right, right. It stalled. I couldn't get it going. The engine stall is not what we're talking about. This is strictly aerodynamic. When that airflow can't follow the top of the wing, that turbulent airflow is stalled and the airfoil stalls. So here's a review question for today's short segment. The stall of the airplane airfoil is dependent upon speed or is it dependent upon angle of attack?